Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to discuss the question level order traversal in spiral order. So the question is, I'm given a binary tree and the first level should print from left to right, second level should print from right to left, third level should print from left to right and so on. So for this example here, I should print 1, then 3, 2, then 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 10, 9 and 8. Notice how this is different from regular level order traversal where we usually print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. There are three very similar techniques to solve this uh, problem. Let's look at them one by one. My technique number one uses two stack. Stack is a data structure where the element which goes last into the stack is the first to come out. Let's see how this works. So initially I put my root into stack one and now I stay into the while loop till I have elements in either stack 1 or stack 2. So now I pop from stack 1 and current becomes that element. So current becomes 1. If current has left, I put that into stack 2. So 1, one has left, so I put that into stack 2. If current has right, I put that into stack 2. And then I print 1. I print current. Now as soon as my stack 1 is empty, I move on to stack 2 and I pop from stack 2 so current becomes 3 if 3 has right I push that into stack 1 and if 3 has left I push that into stack 1 and then I print 3 so notice how if we are popping from stack 1 we first look for left and push that into stack 2 and then look for right and while if we pop from stack 2 we first look for right and push that into stack 1 and then we look for left and push that into stack 1. So I print 3. Then uh, I pop again from stack 2. So my current becomes 2. 2 again has a right child so I put that into stack 1. 2 also has a left child so I put that into stack 1. And then I print 2. So now, so my stack one, 2 is empty so I go back to stack 1. So I pop from stack 1 so current becomes 4. 4 has a left child so I put that into stack 2. 4 doesn't have a right child so I do nothing and then print 4. Then I pop again from stack 1. Current becomes 5. 5 has a left child so that goes into stack 2. 5 doesn't have a right child so we print 5. Now I pop from, uh, now I pop again from stack 1. So 6. 6 does not have left or right child, so I just print 6. And then I again pop from stack 1, 7. 7 does not have a left child, but it does have a right child, so I put that into stack 2. And then I print 7. So my stack 1 is empty, so I go back to stack 2 and pop from stack 2, so as current becomes 10. 10 does not have a left, right or left child, so I just print 10 and then current becomes 9 9 also does not have left or right child so I just print 9 and finally my current becomes 8 and 8 also does not have left or right child so I print 8 so 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 9 and 8 this is my uh, level order traversal in spiral order next let's look at the 1Q technique my technique number two uses a DQ. A DQ is a double-ended queue where you can add or delete from the top of the queue or you can add or delete at the bottom of the queue. DQ is not very different from a linked list where in a linked list you can also add or delete from the top of the linked list or you can add or delete from the bottom of the linked list in constant time. Let's see how this works. What I'm going to do is basically create two stacks, one from the top and one from the bottom and then I'm going to use this null as a separator between the two uh, stacks. So then this is not very different from our two stack technique. Let's see how this works. So I put one at the top of the, uh, this queue and then I pop from this top and make current one. If one has a left child, I add that at the bottom of the queue. And if uh, one has a right child, I add that as the bottom of the queue. So then, uh, and then I print one. Now as soon as I hit a null from the top, I start looking from the other side of the queue. So then I pop 3 from the bottom and my current becomes 3. 
if three has a uh, if three has a right child, I put that at the top, and if three has a left child, I put that at the top. Again, like before, if we are looking, for, if we are popping from the top, we look for left child first and right child next, and while we are popping from the bottom, we look for right child first and left child next. So three uh, gets its seven and six on the top of the uh, queue, and then I print three. Again, I get try to get more from the bottom of the uh, queue, and then I so my current becomes two. Two has a, a right child, so I put that at the top of the queue. Two has a left child, so I put that at the top of the queue, and I print two. Now, as soon as I hit a null from the bottom of the queue, I start reading from the top of the queue. So my current becomes four. 4 has a left child, so that goes into the bottom of the queue. And 4 doesn't have a right child, so I print 4. Again, pop from the top of the queue. So my current becomes 5. 5 has a left child, so that goes into the bottom of the queue. 5 does not have a right child. So then I print 5. Again, I pop from the top of the queue. So my current becomes 6. 6 does not have left or right child, so I just print 6. Again, I uh, pop from the top of the queue, so my current becomes 7. 7 does not have a left child, but it does have a right child, so I put that into the bottom of the queue, and then I print 7. Now, as soon as I hit a null from the top of the queue, I start looking from the bottom of the queue. So I take 10 out from here. My current becomes 10. 10 doesn't have a, a right and left child, so I just print 10. Then my current becomes 9. 9 doesn't have a right or left child, so I print 9. And finally, uh, my current uh, becomes 8. 8 doesn't have a right or left child, so I just print 8. So this is my uh, spiral uh, traversal. 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 10, 9, and 8. Uh, we stop, uh, we stop uh, looping into this while loop as soon as the size of this while loop becomes 1. Next, let's look at 1Q and the counter technique. My technique number 3 uses a DQ and a count. Again, DQ is a double-ended queue which lets you add or delete from the top of the queue or lets you add or delete from the bottom of the queue. In my last technique, I used a null a delimiter to separate between my top of the queue and the bottom of the queue which helped me create like two stacks in one queue. Now I'm going to use a count to keep to to maintain two stacks in a one queue. Let's see how this works. So I put root into this uh, queue, from, I add it from the top of the queue, my level count is 1 and my current count is 0. Now I pop from the top of the queue, so my current becomes 1, I decrement my level count to 0. If 1 has a left child, I add it from the bottom of the queue, increment my current count by 1. If uh, current has a right child, I add it from the bottom of the queue, increment my current count to 2. And then print 1. As soon as my level count becomes 0, I take whatever the current count is, so level count becomes 2, current count becomes 0, and then I start reading from the bottom of the queue. So I, I get 3, I pop from the bottom of the queue, so current becomes 3, and uh, current has a right child, so I increment that current count by 1 and put that into the top of the queue, and current has a left child, so I increment my current count uh, to 2 and put that at the top of the queue, and then I print 3. I again pop from the, and decrement my level count by 1. I again pop from the bottom of the queue, so my current becomes 2. I decrement my level count by 1, so it becomes 0. And then 2 has a right child, so that it gets added from the top of the queue. So, and increment my current count by 1, so it becomes 3. And then 2 has a left child, so I add that from the top of the queue. And my current count becomes 4. And then I print 2. Now, as soon as my level count becomes 0, it takes current count value, so level count becomes 4, current counts become 0, and now I start reading from the top of the queue. So I get, so my current becomes 4, uh, my current becomes 4, I decrement my level count by 1, so level count becomes 3, 4 has a left child, so I add it from the bottom of the queue, 
4 doesn't have a right child, I increment my current count by 1 and print 4. Again, I pop from the top of the queue. So my current count becomes 5. I decrement my level count by 1, so level count becomes 2. 5 has a left child, so I add that from the bottom of the queue. Increment my current count to 2 and then print 5. Because, and 5 doesn't have a right child. My, again, I pop from the top of the queue, so my current count becomes, my current becomes 6. Decrement my level count by 1. 6 does not have left or right child, so current count does not change, I just print 6. Finally, I again uh, pop from top of the queue, so my current becomes 7. My level count becomes 0. 7 has a right, does not have a left child, it does have a right child, so I, it gets added from the bottom of the queue and current count becomes 3. And then I print 7. So now, as soon as my level count becomes 0, it takes the value of current count. Current count becomes 0. And then I start looking from the bottom of the queue. So I pop 10 from the bottom of the queue. So my current becomes 10. I decrement my level count to uh, 2. 10 does not have a right or left child, so I just print 10. Then I again pop from the bottom of the queue. So current count becomes 9. 9 does not have right or left child, so I print 9 and I decrement my level count to 1. Finally, I again pop from the bottom of the queue. So my current becomes 8. My level count becomes 0. 8 does not have right or left child, so I just print 8. As soon as my queue is empty, I break out of, out of this while loop. So basically, I'm using level count and current count to maintain what is the number of uh, elements at a level and current count gives me the what is the number of elements at the next level and as soon as my current level count becomes zero I start looking from the other side of the queue. All the three techniques I discussed have a space and time complexity of O of n. If you're confident of writing a code looking at, uh, at looking at all the three techniques you're welcome to stop watching from here. If you want to uh, check out the code for one of the techniques just stay on. So here I have the code for two stack technique. Please, please forgive my terrible handwriting. Let's look at the structure of the code. The name of the function is spiral printing two stack. It takes root of the binary tree and returns nothing. If root is null, it just returns. Otherwise it initializes two stack. It stays in, inside this outer while loop till we have elements either in stack one or stack two. It stays inside this inner while loop till we have elements in stack 1 and then it stays inside this inner while loop till it has elements in stack 2 and then it goes back to this outer while loop. Let's try this code with this example. So the root of this binary tree is 1, root is not null so we initialize 2 stack s1 and s2 and then s add root. So we add root into uh, stack 1. While stack 1 is not empty or stack 2 is not empty, so stack 1 is not empty, so we go inside this outer while loop to inner while loop. While stack 1 is not empty, so stack 1 is not empty, so root is equal to s1 dot pop. So we pop from stack 1 and root becomes 1. First thing we do is we print out root data. If root has a left child, we push that into stack 2. If root has a right child, so one does have a right child, so we push that into stack 2 as well. We go back to, again to the top of this while loop. Now stack 1 is empty, so we go come here to this other, other inner while loop. Stack 2 is not empty, so we do is we pop from the top of the stack 2 and my root becomes 3. First thing we do is we print out 3. 3 has a, three has a right child, so we push that into stack 1. If root right is not null, push that into stack 1. 3 has a left child, so we push that into stack 1 again. And we go back to the top of this while loop. Stack 2 is still not empty, so two, root becomes uh, stack 2's uh, top, so that is uh, 2. 2 has a, the first thing we do is we print 2. 2 has a right child, so that goes into stack 1. 2 has a left child, so that also goes into stack 1. We come back again top of this while loop. Now stack 2 is empty, so we don't go into this while loop. We come back again to the top outer while loop. Stack 1 is not empty, so we again go into this inner while loop. Stack 1 is not empty, so root becomes uh, 
pop off top of the stack one, so root becomes four. First thing we do is we print out four. Four uh, has a left child, so we push that into stack two. Four does not have a right child, so if we don't go into this if condition. We go back again to the top of this while loop. Again, stack two is not empty. So I again pop, again stack one is not empty, so I again pop from stack one. So my root becomes five. First thing I do is I print five. Again, uh, five has a left child, so I push that into stack two, so I push nine. Five does not have a right child, so we don't go into this if condition. We again go back top of this while loop. So root becomes six. We print six. Uh, root left is null and root right is null, so we don't go into this if conditions and we go back top of this while loop. So root becomes seven. We print seven. Again, uh, seven's left is null, so we don't go into this if condition. Seven's right is not null, so we push that into stack two. So we push 10 into stack two. We go back again top of this while loop. Now stack one is empty, so we come back, we come here to this other while loop. Stack two is not empty, so we pop from stack two. So root becomes 10. First thing I do is I print 10. 10 does not have a right child, 10 does not have a left child. So we move on. Stack two is still not empty, so root becomes nine, which is top of stack two. We print nine. Nine does not have a right child, nine does not have a left child. So we go again, uh, top of this while loop. Now root becomes eight. So I print eight. And eight also doesn't have left or right child. So we now stack two is empty, so we come back here, we go to this outer while loop. Now both stack one and stack two is empty, so we don't go in from into the inside of this outer while loop and we just return from this function. So this function printed one, three, two, four, five, six, seven, and then 10, nine, and eight. So this is the spiral order for this binary tree. If you want the full code for this solution, for this technique, and for the other two techniques using a DQ, go to my GitHub link, github.com, mission piece, interview wiki. And if you want to check out similar questions, go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com user, Tushar Roy 2525. Thanks for watching this video.